Just in time for Halloween, I welcome you today to my new SQL Server Quickie, where I will talk about the Halloween problem in SQL Server. The Halloween problem is a phenomenon in relational databases that can occur during update execution runs. The problem itself was first discovered by Don Jamberlin, Bad Sellinger and Morton Astrahan in 1976 on the Halloween day while working on an update query in System O. The problem occurs when an update operation moves the physical row location to a new one. In that case, it could be possible that the update operation sees the row again and performs the update over and over and over again. For that reason, every relational database implements a protection against that specific problem and this protection mechanism is called Halloween protection. Let's switch now over to the flip chart where I will describe this specific problem in more detail to you. I want to show you now how, how stop. I want to show you now how the Halloween problem can occur in an update execution plan. Imagine we have a very simple update query where we say we want to update records from the table D where column C is smaller than 3 and for every qualifying row we want to multiply the value of C by 2. A naive, a naive implementation of a query plan could be the SQL Server performs a non clustered index C operation to find all the qualifying rows where C is smaller than 3. With those rows SQL Server can compute the new values and afterwards we just update, in our case, the table itself and also the non-clustered index where column C is part of it. When we now look on the non-clustered index, we have a huge problem with that implementation of that query plan. Imagine we have our non clustered index. Let's say we have here four rows, one, two, three, four. Nice navigation structure. And now we're performing seek operations to find all the qualifying rows where C is smaller than three. In our case, we're getting back value one and value two. As you might know, rows are flowing through the execution plan. This means in our case, in the first step, the non clustered index seek operator produces the value one, that first row computes the new value, one multiplied by two equals two. And afterwards we are updating our non clustered index, means the value of two or the value of one moves here. Then the non-clustered index seek continues, reads the value of 2, computes the new value, 4 writes the non-clustered index in our case. Then we are going forward with our non-clustered index seek, means we are reading the value of 2, but mainly we are reading the record that we have already updated in the first step because that value just moved to the end or somewhere else behind in our non clustered index means our non clustered index seek operator sees that value over and over again and afterwards we have updated our whole non clustered index means all the values in the non clustered index in the leaf level are larger than 3. That's the Halloween problem and for that reason SQL Server has to introduce a spool operator in the execution plan. Means in our case, SQL Server reads all the values 1 and 2, spools those rows into DempDB, and afterwards 
computes the new values directly from this pool operator that we have written to DampDB. So mainly we have separated the reading phase from our execution plan from the writing phase. That's the Halloween production that SQL Server has to implement to overcome that problem when rows are physically moving within a non-clustered index in our case. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio where I will show you that specific problem in more detail. For this demonstration I have created a new database and within the database I create here a very simple table with three columns. Column 1 is our primary key constraint enforced by default for a unique clustered index in SQL Server. And in addition to that I create a non-clustered index on column 3. And finally, I'm inserting three records into that table. To demonstrate how SQL Server protects your update execution plan against the Halloween problem, I have here a simple update query. Because we have only three records in our table, I'm hinting SQL Server to use the previous created non-clustered index. On larger tables, SQL Server will automatically choose the non-clustered index in the execution plan for you. Besides that, you can see that we restrict row updates based on a predicate on call 3, on which I earlier created the non-clustered index. This means that SQL Server will use the non-clustered index during the reading phase of the update execution plan. But when we look at the update query in more detail, we can also see that we have to update the same non-clustered index from which we read our data. Bingo! That's the Halloween problem. We are reading and writing the same non-clustered index. Without any protection, this update query will produce an incorrect result because we would update some rows multiple times. Therefore, SQL Server will separate the reading and writing phase by introducing an explicit spool operator in the update execution plan. In today's SQL Server quickie, I have introduced the Halloween problem to you. The problem itself isn't specific to SQL Server because the phenomenon occurs in every relational database. In the previous demo, you have seen how SQL Server protects update execution plans against this problem by separating the reading and writing phase through an explicit spool operator in the query plan. I hope you have enjoyed this SQL Server quickie about some history about relational databases. Enjoy now the rest of your Halloween day and thanks for watching. See you very soon.